Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Wednesday, June the 21st, the first day of summer, 2017. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice here is the cryptocurrency space. And as you can see here, Ethereum is down almost 12% right now, which is whopping as it's fallen from $400 all the way down to a low of $307. Bitcoin is down 4.37% right now and is trading at $2,612.65. Litecoin is down 5.43%, trading at $43.93. So as you can see, we have some incredible movement going on uh, in the crypto space with Ethereum and the Bitcoin and Litecoin being your top three. If you take a look now over at your uh, Veritasium, all right, um, you can see that we have, we opened at around 37 cents, fell to a low of 20 cents, and rallied to $77.85. Now this uh, Veritasium is down 15.14%. The last trade is at around 31 cents. So you can see here that the cryptocurrency spaces have undergone massive uh, correction and profit taking. It's safe to say that these markets are getting hit uh, because you have now an amazing amount of activity from large institutional players. Therefore, these markets are being tossed to and fro, not to mention these markets are very brand new. Uh, Veritasium is the newest to come aboard. This is the uh, Reggie Middleton um, thing here. It should be noted too that to Veritasium is extremely thinly traded. It can go from zero to, I think the highest it's been is two or $300. Um, This one is mad volatile. That's all I can tell you. It's mad, crazy volatile. Um, So this is one of those things though, you know, at 31 cents, it's not a bad time to get into it because we know at some point, it does have the ability to shoot into the hundreds of dollars. And there are people who have pretty much gotten rich getting, you know, playing this thing already. So Veritasium is the newcomer. I've added it to the weekly pulse wave price trigger. So you will be uh, seeing that on there now. Uh, we'll be adding analysis. It's going to be extremely tricky going forward because it's so new and so much to be done with it. I'm still setting up some avenues of analysis for it. It's a brand new thing, that's all I can say. It's a brand new thing, so it's gonna take some getting used to it. It's gonna be weird. It's not gonna be a whole lot to say right now with it until we get a lot more data. We need a lot more days of trading to go forward. It's only been active now for, you know, a couple weeks, basically. So that's not a whole lot. So we'll see. But Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Litecoin, been around for a minute, and the volatility is starting to pick up. Uh, Litecoin has also been added to the weekly pulse wave price trigger, so you'll be seeing this included. in the analysis as well. As it stands, I mean, we don't know on the equity side of things what's going to transpire just yet, if they're going to be a successful in making some more um, you know, ETFs for these or what have you. But as it stands, we're just playing the major players of the cryptocurrency space for now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, 
switch over to our other monitor so that we can get right into it. All right, so since we're on the crypto side of things, let's go ahead and start off with GBTC, which tracks Bitcoin as far as price movement. And as you can see, it uh, has bounced off of the support line here and is trying to move forward. This is a daily chart we're looking at right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see how it's come off a bit today as well. Markets following the rampage perfectly here. It's doing exactly as it dipped. As you can see, this is like a, a bowl from here to here. It dipped inside the bowl, came out, hit the ramp like it's supposed to. Got more rampage coming, which should push it back up again. Uh, and then we'll probably level out at some point up in here. And this is in mid-July. So in mid-July, we should be around 600, back to 600 in the GBTC. We'll be monitoring that to see what becomes of it. Uh, the next one is BTSC, which is another big player. All right, this one has been, you know, trying to do a little something. It's been just as volatile as the Bitcoin itself. It's trying to track it as well. Uh, we shot up to 12 cents and then today came down and tested support around the lower end of the nine cent range. But once again, you got this big bowl here and then you have this enormous ramp. So this should be a 20 cent uh, stock. And we should get there uh, sometime in around around mid July as well. So we should be chilling around 20 cents. All right, let's keep moving along here. These are the, the top ones I look at. These two really track the Bitcoin price pretty well. All right, but within this space, we can't ignore the next player that you want to look at in this space is Nvidia. Nvidia has been on a tear. It's been on fire. Uh, we've taken a little bit of breaky here, uh, but regardless of pullback, you see this enormous ramps coming up. You got an incline followed by a steep ramp, followed by a brief period of leveling out, and then another ramp, and this ramp in mid-July is where it picks up at. So this should be a $180 stock uh, by, the, by sometime around by the end of summer, about $180 stock. Uh, the next one you want to look at in this space is AMD. All right, NVIDIA and AMD are the key players. AMD finally uh, broke out. It was looking like it was just going to fall apart right up in here. And I went ahead and pulled the trigger and got out. I wish I would have held on to it because it finally broke out here. But those of you that did catch it by following the, the pulse waves, you caught a nice breakout uh, today on this one. Uh, we got a little bit of gapage here that we need to contend with, so I would say on this one, you probably want to just uh, tighten up the stops on that one. Then that NVIDIA has already pulled back. And the fact that we have this elongated top flattened out cloud here, we're probably just going to chop around or even uh, still, we're still in jeopardy of falling below the cloud like it did back here too. So just be careful, you know, Protect your profits. Don't give everything back. If you're up on the trade, go ahead and uh, tighten those stops up. That's what the pulse waves are for. We help you get in, but also to maintain those positions. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Moving along. What are we going to look at next? Let's take a look at what the miners are looking like. Um, we did kind of catch a little bit of footing. All right, albeit small, you got up to the $33 handle here in the GDXJ before closing just below it. Having some problems in the lower end of the Kumo cloud here. And topside resistance is at $33.27. It's, it's going to have to close above that in order to really lock in some decent momentum going forward for next week to get it upside out of this cloud. It really wants to get up to 35. The only question is, can it hold it? Here, we just spiked on an intraday movement, but then again, it couldn't hold it. So we managed to collapse right afterward. 
So the miners have really been struggling. You can see it; it's trying to to do something here, and it, it did this on on amazing volume as well. So there's something going on. It's trying to to, to get up and go, but I think the caveat is going to be: can gold find its footing? Because it seems like you know we've been just straight down for several days now, and like I warned, you know, cutting below the Kumo cloud here. But there should be a after this consolidation, there should be a, this ramp should help, followed by this one here, should get it back up to around the 1280 level. So we'll watch going forward, you know, what becomes of this. But it's still under some pressure right now. In order to put an end to this and form a base to rally upon, gold is going to need a close of 1250.30 this week. All right, so it can do it. All right, it can do it. But failure to do it will open up the 1220 level down here. All right, this is where we're headed. If it can't gain its momentum footing. All right, taking a look at silver here. On silver, you see here the short-term momentum is still very bearish. It's locked in on the downside. It's it's quickly accelerating downward, headed toward the $15 handle. In order to put it into this slide, this market needs to close above $16.54 this week. Failure to do so will open up further downside, and we could get to the lower end of the $15 handle by the end of next week if we're not careful. Taking a look at the next thing here, we got crude oil. Crude oil has just been and a landslide, all right? This is this is what silver is starting to look like, all right? If it's not careful, it's gonna accelerate just like this crude oil. Crude oil is acting like it wants to get into the $30 handle. And that is what we're seeing happen here. So in order for crude oil to put it into the slide, it's gonna to need to close above 43.63 this week, $43.63, which is approximately a dollar away from where it currently is at 42.62 and a half. Moving right along, let's take a look at these bonds. All right, I warned you about these bonds. And as you can see, bonds are strengthening right here. All right, the bond price is strengthening. All right, we're at the 156, mid-156 handle now, about to hit 157. It's extraordinary. And we have ramps coming up, enormous rampage coming up. I told you this is heading to 160, folks. All right, the higher these prices go, the lower those yields are going to drop. And the Fed has already showed you that they're desperate enough to raise rates, even though the rates themselves are falling through the floor. Doesn't matter. Because we're in their casino, they're showing you they can do whatever they want. Darn the mathematics. Darn the laws of physics. All right, they're telling you that a, a duck can pull a truck. All right, and that's just what's going on. They're telling you a duck can pull a truck. And it seems that the duck is pulling it. Pigs can fly too. That's what they're telling you. Pigs can fly and a duck can pull a truck. That's the Fed for you. And like, as the saying goes, you can't fight the Fed. You gotta be long these bonds, pun intended, long the long bond, but expect the rates to still raise. They're just letting you know they can do whatever they want. The market says, according to the rules of the game, you can't raise the rates as long as the rates themselves are dropping. Yields are dropping. Bond price is going higher. But they're going to do it anyway. You wait and see. Technically speaking, they're not, they're not supposed to be anywhere near being able to do it as long as these prices are going higher. But this is the game that we're in. All right, let's switch focus real quick. Let's take a look at this uh, dollar index real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, the dollar has ceased its slide after this spike on the 14th as we got down deep into the 96 handle. We got to 96.32. Uh, now we're at 97.55. So it's headed up here toward the 98.21 resistance. And it'll probably get there as long as it can close above 97.45 this week. It'll probably get there. 
but it'll be under incredible pressure. As you can see, this this uh, this momentum on this cloud here is, will push prices back down, and then they'll hit a ceiling here. So it's probably going to get back down there. Now, class, what do you know about what we've taught you with these pointers? You have one right here. This is a major pointer right here. Prices will probably get into the 95 handle. But I want to I want to explain something real quick though. 95 is still mad strong for this dollar. All right. This dollar is technically still in an extremely bullish trend. All right. This is a daily chart. I know it looks weak, but let's keep things into perspective. There's really nothing to see here. This is a bull trend. This is all bullish right here. All right. This is all muscle. Yeah, it's correct. It's corrected down to the Kumo cloud, but technically speaking, you're still you're still strong. Yeah, we're below on this one. It's a weekly chart. This shows the beginning of falling prices, the beginning of a possible bear market. But it's it's just hugging the cloud around here. There's nothing within the price action of this cloud that suggests a bull move. So it could still, you know, fall a lot further as momentum is down and it's struggling on this weekly chart. However, on this weekly chart, all the market needs to do is close above 97.44. And technically speaking, it's already above that right now. So it has locked in some momentum for going into next week if it can stay here and close here. On the flip side, on the other side of the ocean, we have the euro. All right, on this weekly chart of the euro, you can see it's trying to rally. It's trying to get something going off the dollar's weakness, all right? And this market has run from 103 to 112, which is an incredible move, and it's just hugging the momentum line and staying bullish. If it can close above 111.83 this week, it will take this carry this momentum over into next week and march toward 114, which is probably ultimately where the euro wants to go. And I have to admit, it is kind of looking tempting to get along the euro if it can continue this type of a march. Looking at the pound, which has been getting pounded, for months now you can see it's still struggling as well it hit that 120 mark after being way up yonder 171 down to 120 that's enormous i heard some chatter that at the end of the day the brexit is not going to happen it was just a political thing, a huge political thing, and that they're staying in the European Union. There was some some word about that, some some chatter, some talk on the street that the whole Brexit, Brexit thing was a ruse and it was a joke and there will be no exit. That's that's what the word is. We'll we'll see what happens. But that's what the chatter is saying. So it ain't happened to it happen. So we'll see what happens. All right, take a look now at the Aussie. As you can see here, the Aussie is in a downtrend channel, but it's trying to put an end to that channel and break out. You got trend lines breaking outside of the Kumo cloud and price action is trying to follow. This too is looking kind of sexy because you got rampage up here, but doesn't look like it's gonna have staying power. It looks like it's gonna be a consolidation outside of the cloud. Momentum is flat, but it does need to maintain a close above 75.25 this week to carry this uh, bullishness over into next week. So this could be an interesting one to watch. I must, I must admit that. It looks very interesting. All right. Uh, anything else that I have not covered that I wanted to cover? 
Oh, stock market. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the stock market. All right, let's look at the NASDAQ. On the weekly, we need to close above 57.2792 in order to have bullish momentum carrying over the following week. And as you can see here, this ramp is looking amazing. Here's your ramp. All right. It's it, it just appears to be having a problem with 5,800. All right. We're still 100 and let's say 20 points away from the 5,907 all time high. And it seems to be having problems getting back up there. I think this market is still just super bullish and it's going to punch right through like it always does. I think the trend's going to keep going until it doesn't. And last but not least, our caveat, the XIV tells the story. It is just as powerful, uh, if not more so, than the NASDAQ. And going forward, look at this rampage. This market ain't going nowhere. It's taking a breather only to be bought up again. So there you have it, folks. That is what we got. So with that being said, I'm working on several projects at one time here. I just added the Veritasium and the Litecoin to the weekly post wave price triggers. And I'm in the process of revamping a whole lot of things and also adding uh, another store, uh, uh, another study course uh, to the, um, the Learning Academy. So a lot of things going on right now. Um, Lord willing, I'll be able to get all of these things done as soon as possible. But with that being said, come on over to postwavetrading.com. Learn how to trade the cryptocurrency markets, which is the new big thing that's going on. You don't want to be left out in the cold. Learn how to navigate these waters and trade these effectively. If you don't think that the algorithms are taking over, you are sadly mistaken. All right, cryptocurrencies are not immune to that. So get ready to learn how to navigate these waters. Understand what's going on in these currency markets and navigate these foreign exchange waters. Learn how to trade equities. Learn how to trade the stock index futures and all the other futures contracts. Yes, we trade every market on every exchange on every continent. That's what we do here. All right. So with precise entry points and exit points, where to put your stops and when necessary, when and how to run the bank stops, run the central bank stops. That's what we do. All right. We're pirates over here. That's why we're called Black Ops Trading. That's the name of the trading room, Black Ops Trading, because that's what we do. We take the Fed's money instead of the other way around. You too can learn how to do that. Postwavetrading.com. And with that being said, remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace out.